Hello, I'm Critical, and welcome to Can Jam SoCal. Back in Singapore, because I kind of forgot to film an intro, so this is kind of my scuffed replacement. So yeah, in the middle of September, I managed to fly myself out to the great nation of California, and it was my very first time ever setting foot on American soil, and again, that includes you as well, Canadians. I had an amazing, amazing time. I've met people, people that I've known for years on the internet, but haven't had a chance to meet due to a certain <coughs> pandemic that was happening over the last two years. So Can Jam SoCal is basically my best excuse to finally go to the great nation of the United States of America. Again, for the very first time, so you know that I had to hit up a lot of those quintessential American experiences. You know, stuff like like in and out Chick-fil-A, I have so many goddamn tacos. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. I came to America for one big reason, and that is Can Jam, Can Jam SoCal. For those out of the loop, Can Jam is basically a headphone convention that is being hosted by HeadFi.org, which is one of the largest portable audio forums on the internet. HeadFi hosts a lot of Can Jams throughout the year on many different locations, and according to Jude Benzer himself, who is the head of HeadFi, can Jam SoCal is the biggest Can Jam. So to finally break my American hymen, I decided, you know what, for Can Jam SoCal, why not? Can Jam SoCal was held over the weekend. So basically I flew in on a Thursday, chilled out a bit for Thursday and Friday, and then basically started whacking shit out over the weekend. And that's basically what this entire video is about, showing you who exactly was at Can Jam, what's new at Can Jam, and what they have to offer. Stuff like this always tickles my nerd brain. I love to see new stuff. I love to talk with the people Oh man, I've talked with so many people. I basically just went out to booth to booth and asked them a very simple question. What's new? And then just to be a little bit cheeky because I didn't know what was going to happen. I asked them as well, can I measure the new stuff? And full disclosure, I was completely expecting at least half of them to completely reject me. But as you would see in the rest of the video, that didn't really happen. Yeah, no no drama. I wanted drama, but there was no drama, unfortunately. Everyone was nice. Too nice. So just full disclaimers, I did not actually test anything out at Can Jam. I don't really need to because most of the things are eventually going to have a demo unit here in Singapore. But yes, I said that I was going to measure things, but unfortunately due to the time crunch and me having to talk with a lot of people, I just simply did not have the time to do so. So either way, it didn't really have time to measure, didn't really have time to test. All of this has just been more of a networking slash uh, promotional kind of event, for me at least. But without further ado, let's just kick off this Can Jam video with our sponsor, Headphones.com. Headphones.com also have a booth here at Can Jam SoCal 2022. And here we have two of the co-founders here, Andrew Lissimo as well as Taryn Lissimo. So tell me, why should people go to headphones.com? Well, uh, we're actually two people who started this company because of how passionate we were about audio gear. In fact, it was something that was kind of hard to get around my house because my wife didn't love having audio gear around. And so we started the store just to be able to have stuff to play with in the house without getting my wife angry. So I thought if we break even on this company, we've won. And so we're actually really passionate about this stuff and, and we really care about giving back to the community and sharing our passion with uh, new people and people who are already into this stuff. There's some more practical reasons to shop from us too. We had this insane idea of offering 365 day returns way back when we got started out because we thought that would be a bit of a utopian headphone store and it ended up working long enough to stay in business for, for years so people can still take advantage of a really long window to actually get to know whether or not you you love the gear that you bought from us even if you've had it for a while that's one really good reason selection is another incredible customer service that we focus really really hard on and we have a really neat team and they're really fun to interact with as well if you walk around the show floor you can tell we brought a ton of kick-ass gear with us to listen to but really the part of the best part of being at headphones.com is the team itself we got dms we got resolve we got precog walking the show floor alan and April work in the booth along with Sebastian Chu and then you get to meet me and Andrew which is kind of the cherry on top. So just to round it all off, go to headphones.com, support the people who support me. Here we, go. Here we have Sanka, 
the CEO of Odyssey. So tell me, what's new? The newest product we are showing is MM500. I heard that this is quite a significant departure as well from your old sound signature. Is there a reason why you have kind of shifted the sound signature since the LCD 5, kind of? Yeah, I mean, it is also evolution, right? There is a lot of other changes in the industry and stuff. Some of them is to answer those questions. We do have a little bit more presence in the uh, 3 to 5 kilohertz range on these things. The usual question that I pose to everyone, uh, can I measure them? Of course, yeah. We are pretty open about measuring and stuff like that, yeah. And if you want to come to the office tomorrow, we have a 5128, you can measure it there. Oh God, yeah. I, I would love to nerd out on a 5128. Yeah, anytime. Thank you so much. I'm just going to interject occasionally for some of these interviews because there's some, you know, some comments that I like to make afterwards. So yeah, there is going to be an Odyssey factory tour immediately after Can Jam. We decided to just go down to the factory and then just, you know, take a tour, you know, just see the place, talk with Sanka a little bit more and just nerd out again. So stay tuned for that video. It's already in the works. We have a great time at the Odyssey factory as well. Stay tuned. We're here today with the illustrious Dan Clark Audio first started as uh, Mr. Speakers back in 2012, rebranded into Dan Clark Audio in 2019. We have Dan Clark himself. So Mr. Mr. Clark, what's new? This is our Expanse headphone, which is our newest product in the line. It's built using a lot of the technology from our Stealth headphone, but it, unlike Stealth, this is an open headphone. Technically, it's a planar magnetic headphone, but the key thing that is uh, new in this, as well as in Stealth, is what we call our acoustic metamaterial tuning system or AMTS. Basically, the function of the AMTS is to eliminate the standing waves that occur around your ear in the ear pad. It's analogous to what most people are familiar with in rooms or in clubs where bass frequencies have standing waves and so the bass response in a room is very irregular. Well, that happens to high frequencies in headphones. And this solves the problem of those high frequencies and smooths them out considerably so that you're presented with a more natural and complete high frequency spectrum. And acoustically, what that means is things sound more natural and lifelike and cymbals won't sound synthetic and, and vocals, especially the upper harmonics on them, will be presented more naturally. A question that I pose to everyone else in this show floor, may I measure them? Yeah. Sure. On the record. Thank you so much, Mr. Clark. So yeah, after that, I decided to request for a stealth as well as for an expanse for a full review. So uh, hopefully that's going to come. Stay tuned for that. <laughs> So we are here today with Effect Audio, Mr. Su Yang here. Uh, Effect Audio is a Singaporean-based cable company who now is dabbling into the IM market. So what is new? Today we have probably brought the Gaia. It's a collaboration model with Elysium across state Labs. And there is a five driver IEM that we're gonna launch very, very soon. Another one that we have brought is actually the Cleopatra 2. It's a second version of Cleopatra. It have a huge upgrade from the version one in terms of the geometry as, a, as well as the sound improvement. Big question then. Uh, can I measure them? Uh, yes, of course. Why not, man? <laughs> right. Thank you so much. Okay. We are here currently with Elitech, a Singaporean cable company. And the usual question I ask everyone is, uh, what's new? We have the Ode Laura. That's one of the most popular one right, right now. We are actually planning to release two new eight wire cables at the end of the year. That will be the Socrates and something special. And we might have something collaboration with a IEM brand in the works also coming end of the year. Any hints on which IEM brand you're working with? Uh, the person will kill me. So no. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm here at the Empire Years booth, an American grown company started out in 2014, and here we have the co founder, Jack Vank himself. So, Jack. What's new? So uh, we've been working on it for quite a bit, but we are uh, proud to announce here our uh, collaboration with Austell and Kern. It is our first quad bread in-ear monitor. There's 10 drivers. So I, I pose this question to every, to every other vendor. May I measure them? I personally don't have any qualms, but you'd have to ask Austell and Kern. God damn it, ask and Kern. I'm now here at Estel and Kern, a Korean company they probably have all heard of. They're specializing in portable audio, uh, digital audio players. And here we have Andrew, their representative. So Andrew. Yes. What's new? Wow, uh, we are uh, here in Southern California introducing first time in global debut of the A and Ultima SB3000. It's made out of 904L stainless steel, full solid block metal frame. Same caliber as a Rolex watch uh, material to give the ultimate premium user experience. 
offer you a dual band for you to stream high fidelity audio via Quobus Tidal with no uh, glitches and it with smooth operation. So this is our, our premium flagship SP3000 portable media player for you to check it out. I also heard that you guys have come up with a new collaboration with Empire Ears. Could you, would you like to talk about that a little bit? So uh, we are so proud to have a chance to actually collaborate with Empire and this is our Odyssey uh, IEMs. The partnership, also the pair between the two, really have received raving reviews from our uh, attendees and also a lot of our audio reviewers. So here I have actually talked to Empire Ears themselves. Mm -hmm. I've asked all of our vendors the same questions, but they asked me to ask you for permission this time. May I measure them? Measure them, okay, uh, absolutely. We, we definitely are looking forward to, for everybody to have an opportunity to give a listen and also, uh, you know, uh, test out your own uh, audio files and also your own uh, listening gear to really making sure that this is really uh, for your listening pleasure and then that over impressions can be the ultimate. Thank you so much, Andrew. Uh, this is Estelle and Kern. So with permission granted from both Estelle and Kern as well as Empire Ears themselves, I will be measuring the Odyssey. So Zeppelin and Co. I'm here at Bloom Audio, an American retailer, and here is Andrew, who is currently representing Campfire Audio because literally no one else is carrying them in this show. So, Andrew, what's new? What's going on, Grant? It's, it's good to see you. Uh, so we've got a couple cool things from Campfire this week. We've got the uh, Trifecta, which is their highly limited uh, three dynamic driver IEM. They made 333 worldwide. It's been uh, all the talk of the town this weekend. We've got a lot of people have been checking it out. Very bass-centric IEM, so if you want like a very bass-heavy flagship, that's a lot of people have been saying that it's like right up their alley. Unfortunately, it sold out months ago, and I don't think it's going to be fully out until November, but at least a lot of people got to hear it this week, and uh, it's been getting a lot of positive feedback. The Supermoon, which is their custom model, that's a planar magnetic driver. Everybody I've talked to who's a fan of that has been dying to get it in Universal, but at this time, it's only available in custom. It's really good though, the Universal Mold, which is the demo we have here, it's been pretty popular and people have been liking it a lot. And the question that I pose to every other vendor, yes. uh, can I measure them? Of course, Kren, you can measure anything, anytime. Thank you so much, Andrew. <sighs> Campfire. I managed to find some time to measure the Trifecta, the Supermoon, as well as the Pathfinder while I was at CanGem, one of the very few things that I actually measured during the show. Unfortunately, as per usual, I didn't have the time to actually test them, so I will be publishing measurements but not the subjective impressions because I don't have any subjective impressions. So if I do get access to these Campfire products again, then yeah, I will do some form of subjective impressions on them, but given the availability that is currently surrounding them, I don't think it's going to be soon. I'm here now with Raw Requisite, whose claim to fame would be the SR1A ribbon headphones. So Danny, what is uh, new today? Well, the newest thing for us right now is the CA1A. This is a circumaural ribbon. It's a evolution of our SR1, where the SR1 is an open baffle uh, headphone. This is circumaural, so you've got ear pads that go all the way around. This would be more of a uh, traditional headphone experience. Still has very low impedance of zero. 0.2 ohms, so like the SR1, you need some form of interface to them. So either you could use our uh, TI-1B uh, transformer interface. That can work with uh, headphone amps of as little as uh, 2 watts. We also make uh, dedicated ribbon amplifiers like the HSA. This will work with either the SR1 or the CA. And then we have our new uh, VM-1A, which is a variable mode amplifier. It's a tube amp that will amplify ribbon headphones, and it can do triode mode, tetrode, which which is ultralinear and pentode mode. The three different modes of operation offer three different amplifier performances. There's gonna be a change in power and in harmonic complexity with this particular amplifier. The usual question that I pose yep. to most vendors right now is, 
May I measure your headphones, sir? May you measure them? Yes. Oh, absolutely. I'll be glad to test them as well. I'm sure that they are great headphones. I quite like the SR1A4, at least for its concept, because I love ear speakers myself. I do too, yeah. That's a very important method of uh, listening, and you don't see it very often, so it's good to uh, have. Thank you so much. This is Danny from Raw Requisite. So I'm here with Meze Audio. They need no introduction. A fierce audio brand from the lands of Romania. Here we have Mircea, who is the managing director. So, Mircea, what's new? Hello, everyone. I think the Meze 109 is our newest headphone that we're presenting here. It was shown before, but this is the final iteration, the product that everybody will get. We had a very successful uh, launch, pre-launch, I would dare to say. People seem to really enjoy it. We're really proud of it. It's our first dynamic open back headphone design made in Romania. It's assembled by the same people in the same place that we assemble our top of the line headphones. I think it's important for people to understand that this is not a 99 Classics on steroids. It's a complete new project that we developed every single single part from scratch. So we kept what worked on the 99 Classics, the basic chassis, the shape, the way it goes around your ear, but everything was improved from the feedback that we received from our clients and what we consider that can be improved. We have a 50 millimeter dynamic driver, which features dual material on the membrane. So we have a skirt which is a polymer with PVD beryllium to make it stiffer. And the center part, the dome of the membrane, is um, paper with uh, carbon fiber flakes so that it's more rigid at the same time. We also have our uh, latest IEM, the Meze Advar. It's a 10.2 millimeter dynamic single dynamic driver. We think it's one of our uh, meatiest but also detailed sounding IEMs. 799, same price as the 109. The usual question that I pose to every other vendor here, may I measure your products? Yes, of course. <laughs> You're welcome to do it. Okay, thank you so much. So it seems to be a very cordial conversation, at least on camera. But what you don't know is that apparently Meze has watched my video on them. <laughs> but in all seriousness, we did have a conversation over said video. We talked about a lot of things, for example, like the proliferation of measurements, how misleading or not so misleading they may be, the influence of influencers like myself, because clearly that, that was kind of like how the conversation went. It was a fairly riveting conversation. I, I could tell that they are very passionate people, but you know, passion also results in people taking your words very seriously when they criticize you. So basically we connected, we, we just talked it out, we hashed it out and we talked about how we maybe could cooperate slash collaborate in the future. We'll see how that goes. But for, for now, I am just happy to see someone taking my words somewhat seriously and hopefully using them to address any flaws or any shortcomings that your products may have. So Meze Audio, uh, I think they're going to send me a 109, but not so sure. I haven't really fired off that email yet. I haven't really emailed a lot of these people. <laughs>here now with Unique Melody, who is a Chinese IEM brand. And uh, yes, so please tell me, what is new that you have brought to CanJam this time? First, I want to introduce our co-flagship, Multiverse Mentor. Newest generation of our Mentor lineup, 12 BA drivers plus one bone conduction driver. What's new about this IEM is like we added two base uh, subwoofers. Those are open back BA drivers. When the frequency reached to the ultra low, frequency, those two drivers will be engaged. When it, it was not that low, those two drivers will see silent. So that will give us a more linear and more natural bass response. And also we have the newer frequency shift technology and the frequency shift boom conduct, boom conduction driver. And those drivers will do a full range refinement to the, to the whole frequency range. And we also have a new uh, mid-range IEM called Maven Pro. It's a very linear IEM. It sounds very neutral. And we designed it for the pro situation, like on-stage performance. Typical BA drivers with some boost in the triple, because we add, also add two EST drivers. So I guess a big question is, um, for all your new stuff, right? Um, can I measure them? There is some difficulty in measuring the boom, boom conduction drivers. Yeah, that one I understand. The answer yeah. is, you can. At any time, if you want, just come. Now we are with Junu, who is a Chinese earphone brand and surviving for about 20 years or so. So here we have Sebastian, who is their current representative. What's new? So what's new, you'll see here is a Telos, which is a one-point 
2BA, has a really cool switch feature that you know from our SA6. We also have the Vulcan, which is a 2DD, 4BA. Also have the Kiba here, which is a 1D, single DD before you do try out, which is about 120. All right, and the big question is, can I measure them? Yes, of course you can. Thank you so much, my boy. Appreciate you. So in the preceding weeks after Can Jam, I was uh, sent at the Tados. Yeah. It's with me right now, so review coming up whenever it is. So here we have Symphonium Audio once again. If you don't know, they are a Singaporean IEM brand. So tell me what's new. Introduce yourself and what's new. Oh, I'm Felix from Symphonium Audio. Today, actually at Can Jam, we are launching the Meteor, a collaboration piece together with uh, Nigel Acoustics. So we actually did the tuning with them. So the Meteor is actually our more fun sounding signature product compared to the, the Helios and the, the Triton. All three have very different sound. So we try to cater to people who have very different taste. You know, if you're listening to this and you have the opportunity to try the Meteor, please uh, go and try it. Zed will have the Meteor very soon. And uh, before I forget, actually, the Meteor is our cheapest model in that lineup. Um, we are quite proud of it. We came up with some tech to actually squeeze four drivers into a very small shell. Again, if you have the chance, please try it out. So a very important question. Uh, can I measure them? Uh, yeah. So we're here today with an yet another homegrown Singaporean brand. Here yeah. is Fat Freak. And please introduce yourself. Uh, hi, I'm Ben, uh, founder of Fat Freak. Uh, my usual question to everyone, what's new? We have the Maestro series. Maestro series, sorry. Includes uh, Maestro Mini, Maestro, and we have the Maestro SE. And uh, lastly, we have our current flagship of 2022, Grand Maestro. We also have the V2s of the Maestro Mini, which features a bit more of travel response and also the bass response. So something different about this Maestro series is actually our newly developed uh, bass cannon technology. So this bass cannon technology allows us to have a bass shelf from 15 dB all the way to 30 dB. As for the Maestro Mini here, we have almost 20 dB of bass captured below 300 Hz. And then as for the V2s, we bump it up a little bit, 25 dB. So uh, usual question I ask everyone, can I measure them? Uh, sure. You have measured a few, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Please enjoy LA again and right. the rest of uh, Can Jam Cool Cal. Fat Freak is literally just across the street from my office. So uh, trying new stuff from them, trying demo units from them is no problem whatsoever. That said, I did get sent a Maestro Mini V2 from them. So that will get tested, review whenever, if it ever happens. The usual. <laughs> I'm here today with the French powerhouse, Focal, and today our representative is Megan. So, uh, what's new? Yesterday, we just released the new version of our Utopia headphones. So with this, this new Utopia, we released actually the first Utopia in 2016. And uh, since six years, we learned a lot, we made a lot of improvements uh, that we all gathered on the new Utopia. In terms of drivers, we are still using our beryllium drivers with our very powerful magnets. But we changed the voice call. Previously, it was a aluminium voice call. Now it's a mix between aluminium and copper. Aluminium brings all the lightness, and the copper will bring a lot of reliability in the voice call. We have uh, the grill for the driver, which is which is now an M-shaped grill because the dome and our drivers are M-shaped. Uh, we made a grill which follows the exact uh, shape, and it helps to reduce the gap between the drivers and the grill. With these improvements, we improve a lot the linearity in the high frequencies. Thank you so much. As, uh, but the usual question I ask to everyone is, can I measure them? Yeah. <laughs> it's on the record. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm here now with Hi-Fi Men. They need no introduction. Here's Adam, our current representative. So tell me, Adam, what's new? Well, the biggest news for us at this show is the Sundara Closeback right over here. The Sundara Closeback is the closeback version of the Sundara Open, which was the most popular headphone for about four years. Most popular Hi-Fi Man headphone, I should say. Everybody's been asking for a closeback version with a little more warmth, a little more bass response. It's all subjective, so if that's your preference, there's now at that level as well. And the price on that is $4.99. For the premiums, the Edition XS, that has surpassed the Sundara as the most popular Hi-Fi Man headphone. Again, you know, I would encourage people to look around and see what's been said about it on the forums because this one has been a grand slam for the company. Important question to ask to every vendor here. Uh, may I measure your headphones? May you measure the headphones? Yeah. Sure. Thank you so much. Yeah, so they did send over the edition excess i will be reviewing this eventually people have been asking so much about them but you know finally i have them in my hands 
But as for the Sandara closed, uh, that's going to be a different story altogether. This is just going to be the story of my life. You know, it's like whenever I get to it, I get to it. You know, yeah. We are here today with Airman, uh, probably a brand that you guys have not heard of before. So I'll just let the founder here, uh, Miroslav, uh, explain to you what this brand is. First of all, I want to thank you for stopping by Tara Boot. We're a young company. We started three years ago. Uh, we are making uh, headphone amps, portable headphone amps, and also desktop headphone amps, DAX and streamer. So actually today we are going to show Airman Stack. It's awarded from ASA. It contains the DAX, streamer, and the headphone amplifier with the linear power supply, which can be connected all together from the same power supply. Thank you so much for your time. I hope that uh, people come by your booth and I hope you, you know people, any of you, would like to support a smaller brand. Please come by and support your man. So here we have x -Mems, and they'll be demonstrating a new type of driver technology here at the show. Here we have Mike, who is our representative. So please, Mike, what's new? x -Mems is developing a new type of driver technology based on piezo MEMS technology. So what we're showing here is the world's first solid state microspeaker made entirely out of semiconductor processes. So this is a semiconductor wafer containing thousands of microspeakers made entirely out of silicon. So basically we've replaced traditional coil and magnet actuation with piezo actuation and this is layered on top is a silicon diaphragm. Silicon has an excellent material stiffness so we reduce uh, and eliminate speaker breakup. What you get is one of the world's fastest transducers delivering precise audio, a new level of clarity, particularly in the mid-range and the high end. So this is basically the future of microspeakers for in-ear audio. So you have demo units here, but you don't have anything that is commercially available for now, right? Correct. So our speakers are commercially available. Our transducers are commercially available. We're demonstrating them here in some crude 3D printed earbuds, but the sound comes through and we're really showing what the future potential of the technology is. Again, we manufacture the transducers and we sell them to OEMs and ODMs in the world. A lot of the companies, a lot of the in-ear monitor companies here today will be using our speakers in the future. In the near future, probably within the next three or four months, we'll have our first commercial customers shipping product in the market. And then a lot more coming in 2023. Thank you so much. I always like radical new like technology like this. So thank you so much for entertaining us. You're very welcome. So yeah, at the end of the day, I just didn't have any time. So I didn't try out their kit during Kanja. That said, I just got off a call with them and they will be sending me an evaluation kit. So I will be testing them at my own time. So whenever that happens, whenever I do some testing, I will be hopefully doing a video of them, doing an article or whatever. Yeah, stuff like this, new new technologies I'm willing to support. So look out for x -Mem's content again, whenever, if it happens. We're now here with Let's Show They need no introductions, but they are a Chinese brand, Chinese IEM brand. And here we have their representative, Joseph. So Joseph, what's new? We have this uh, new condenser IEM with one DD and 12 B, uh, 11 BA. So 12 drivers in total uh, with a titanium CNC shell. We also brought the S12 Pro, which is like the same S12, but it with a swappable cable and the uh, Z12. So th those are all pretty nice. My usual question to other vendors, I'll ask you again. Uh, can I measure them? Of course. Immediately after the show, they just gave me an S12 Pro. So, yeah, the usual, the same, whenever it happens. We're currently with uh, Acoustics, and this may be a brand that you may not be familiar with, so I'll just let the founder himself introduce himself as well as the company, please. Hi, Rocky Sharma here. Acoustics, new company. We started in 2017. We're basically focused on in-ears, IEMs. One idea is to make entry-level IEMs cost-effective, but we also include one advantage is a fitting kit. So what you could do is take a universal IEM, adapt the fitting kit, and you get, I would say, 80, 90% finish of a custom molded IEM. This year we have the um, the new planar driver, and then we also have a budget IEM, single BA. That one is selling at right now 55. So it's not crazy budget, but it's still reasonable for a BA. So the usual question that I ask everyone, may I measure your entire lineup? If you want to. Thank you so much. Yeah. Right. Nice to meet you as well. So I'm here with Noble Audio, who is an American IEM brand who's been here since 2015. Here is Jim Moulton, their current representative. So tell me, what's new? Well, we've got quite a few things that are new and I'm actually just not the representative. I'm 50% owner of Noble. My brother is the wizard, John Moulton. We've got the Focus HANC, which is our newest TWS. It's got uh, a dynamic driver and a BA driver. And what's interesting about that is it's also got A and C. If you looked around, there's not too many 
TWIs out there that have uh, multiple drivers that are also ANC. We've got the Viking Ragnar, which we're basically launching at the show. It was launched recently in Hong Kong, but this is the first showing of it here in the U.S. And it's got uh, two dynamic drivers. They're 10 millimeter dynamics, um, four BAs, and then four electrostatics. It's got an all aluminum shell, stainless steel Damascus uh, faceplate, and it's our current flagship. So I pose this question with every other vendor as well. May I measure them? Measure them? Sure. I'm here now with Music Tech, who is a North American based uh, audio retailer who yep. specializes in what? High end IEMs and also any Chinese steps and IEMs and stuff, yeah. The usual question what's new? Yeah, so we have the Vikings over here, we have the FA Audio Mezzo, we have the Victory Melody V44, also Diva is a big thing over here. We also have some new cables, the Venom is very popular. So, big question now can I measure them? Uh, sorry, what? Can I measure them? What do you mean? Put into a microphone. Yeah, no. definitely. We're all here. Yeah. We are here today at ZMF booth uh, with the illustrious Mr. Zach Mirbach. So, what's new, sir? Well, we've got uh, the atrium that came out earlier this year, which has the atrium damping system in it, which kind of makes our dynamic headphones sound nice and punchy and linear. And then the newest thing that, you know, as everyone's hearing for the first time at CanJam is the Caldera, which is our first planar magnetic headphone since we came out or had our T50 mods. And so that I've kind of been working on this slowly for the last like five years or so. And just in the last like month or so, finished it to the point where I wanted to show it at CanJam. It's got our new CAMS uh, Caldera asymmetric magnet system in it, which we've just patent pended. And so that kind of gives this a really explosive sound while not boosting the bass or putting a bass shelf on it. It's got that linear planar bass and it still sounds meaty and girthy and so fast and euphonic without, without getting a crazy frequency response. So it's the newest ZMF stuff, you know, check it out if you want, if not, whatever. And a question that I post to everyone else, I'll ask you again, mm. may I measure them? Yeah, do it at Zeppelin though, it's too loud in here. Christy, you heard him, you heard him. It's okay, Christy, but watch him. Keep an eye on him, make sure he, you know. Yep, I'll be measuring them at Zeppelin. I'm here with Spirit Torino, a relatively new company just created in 2018. They have been designed, manufactured, all built in Italy, and here we have our first representative, uh, Mr. Giordano. What's new? Introduce your company, because this might be the first time that a lot of uh, my audience is learning about you. For first, I have to, to introduce you Mr. Andrea Ricci, that is the owner and the designer of the company. The latest news of, of the company is the Spirit Torino Pulsar. Patent is, in fact, the, the twin pulsar sesobaric system. We consider it uh, with Valkyria our top of the list. So I realize here that you have uh, this thing. Would you like to tell us what this is? In order to drive uh, our top of the list Valkyria and uh, Pulsar, we decided uh, six months ago to develop the amplifier that is called Siegfried. Anything else? Like, oh, are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> Anything else. <laughs> okay, so we, we have an exclusive sneak peek on something new. It's a very late news because uh, it's something that was born exactly this week. This is the first uh, with the planner uh, driver. It's something that uh, I have not, not yet a name and not yet a price. So this is like an announcement that Spirit Torino is working on a planar headphone. Here's a different kind of question. I, I actually run a measurement stage of this, frequency response. So I always ask, I ask the same question to every other vendor. May I measure your headphones as well? Can you measure whatever you want? Thank you so much. Yeah, later I'll probably just come by and when someone is quieter, thank, thank you. you for your time. Okay. And I hope the audience is happy with, the, with this new announcement. In a complete twist, the Spirit Torino guys just straight up gave me a Pulsa. Not even like, oh, we'll give it to you after the show. Just straight up handed me a Pulsa right after our interview. And I was like, oh, oh my God. <laughs> the Pulsa is a very expensive headphone. I was a bit, I was a bit shocked. So I haven't tested it yet. I haven't tested any of their new lineup besides the Radiante, which was absolutely terrible. But as per usual, I'll reserve all comments until I fully tested and tried out whatever that they bring. So Pulsar review, maybe, kind of, they gave me a deadline of one week, but clearly it has been uh, many weeks after the show and I still haven't talked to them. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> So 
So, we are here at the Lucid booth. If you don't know, Lucid is currently the parent company of uh, Azimotic as well as Western Audio. Today we have Tal, who is the representative. So please, uh, what's new? Hey audio fans, Tal Kosin. I'm the uh, Vice President of Product Development here. New at this show, we are showing the new Western Audio mock line. The uh, mock series is closely associated with the ES series, the Elite series from Western Audio. The Elite series has been the best reviewed and the newest sonically coming out of Western Audio over the last seven, eight years. Up until now, there has not been a universal version of those models. So if you wanted that sound from Western Audio, you needed to get customs. And not everybody can afford customs. Not everybody wants to take the time to get customs. You know, we've come out now with the Mach series and we're super proud of it. And then we're also showing the Drop ERX. It's a partnership we did with Drop. It is a single driver in the Evo shell. Uh, I'd say it's most similar to the ER4XR. All right, uh, and I always pose this question to all the vendors. May I measure them? Sure. I'm here now with Deconi. You probably know them from their headphone pads, but now they're collaborating with a lot of headphone manufacturers as well. So, uh, Dylan, what's new? What's new? So, the first thing uh, we have here is the WH-1000XM5. So, Sony is always canceling headphone. Our ear pads are a stock-like alternative to the Sony WH-1000XM5 pads. And eventually, we'll be coming out with a deep style, which will make it much more comfortable. That's the thing that most people kind of talk about when they you know, talk about WH-1000 series. It's not as comfortable because the ear pad depth has to be so shallow for the noise canceling. So, if you want to trade off noise canceling for more comfort, that's something we do for you. It's a highly requested thing. The next product we have is an ear pad for the Sennheiser HD800 and HD800S, as well as the 8XX. You might know our pads for being you know, a great alternative to HD800 uh, stock pads. We use our high density memory foam with our Elite Velour, and it should just be a little bit better and not compress as much as the stock pads. This is our new collaboration with Hi-Fi Man. This is a prototype, so we're working on maybe getting a flannel or maybe a velour style pad. This should be available maybe holiday season. Keep a lookout for it, it's just three and a half mil with the new Hi-Fi Man dynamic driver with carbon nanotube coating. I'm currently at the Shure Roof. Shure is a company that probably needs no introduction, but yes, uh, currently, please introduce yourself. I'm Trip Taylor. I'm an acoustics engineer here at Shure. All right, so simple question. What's new? Today, we're, or last Thursday, we're dropping the new 846 filter, all new V2 of 846. We've added the extended filter, which is a fantastic upgrade to the sound signature of the headphone. Traditionally, it ships with a balanced, a bass, and a bright, but adding this new extended filter has a great effect on the smoothness of the high-end response. We've uh, shifted the poles around on the upper end to uh, avoid any sibilance problems while really maintaining the nice, airy sound signature that you're looking for in a brighter headphone. All that combined with the traditional 846 performance and that really present sub-bass from our uh, true subwoofer, BA, uh, it lends itself to a very nice 4BA headphone. So is the only change uh, just with the filters? Correct. The only acoustic change is the filter. They have launched a handful of new colorways, so now we have clear, jade, and graphite, but uh, the acoustic change is the new ex extension filter. So simple question, may I measure them? Uh, I, uh, I am not qualified to answer that question. Who is qualified? Who? These guys right over here. Wait, wait ask them for permission. Is it alright if he measures the new 846? If you measure it? If he measures it. Um, I'm fine with it. He's fine with it, so I won't get fired. Let's go. All right, we got permission. I might get fired. Please don't fire him. He has given me permission. He's a great guy, all right? I am here today with Audio Technica, a very, very well-known Japanese brand, and now it's been represented by Daniel. Please tell us, what's new? Right now, what's new and coming is the TWX9 True Wireless. It is very, very nicely built. It's got a very premium finish, all kinds of bells and whistles, active noise cancelling, adaptive, and then you also have uh, UV decontamination, so it decontaminates your earphones when you put in the case 99.9% .9 of the bacteria, so in today's pandemic world, cleanliness is very important. Touch controls and click buttons. You can remap your controls. If you're left-handed, you can switch it over to the right side. It's just a really good everyday carry product with a uh, fun tuning. Neutral with a mid-bass bump, a little bit warm, a little bit more punch and weight. It's a sweet sound, a little bit more sweet and uh, silky in a way. So I guess the big question is, uh, may I measure it? Absolutely. You should measure it. I want to see what it, <laughs> what it measures like. Sweet. For better right. or for worse. <laughs> so, Back on the desk again. Just to wrap everything up, Can Jam has been just a wonderful, wonderful experience. Thank you to Head5 for hosting this event. Thank you to all the friends that have met. Thank you to all of the people that have connected with. Just, just thank you to everyone. It has been such a fun trip. Talk to people, nerded out in 
all the nerdiest ways possible. I've missed out on so many can jams over the years for various reasons, so getting back into the thick of things really makes it feel like, my god, you know, this all of these things that I've missed out on, I love it. I love talking with fellow nerds. I love, you know, just connecting with people, talking to people, people with similar interests with, with mine. I will be back. There's there's gonna be another Can Jam. Can Jam New York 2023 in February is some date. I will be there. I assure you, I've already booked tickets. So if anyone wants to meet me again, you, you can just come by, you know? I'm, I'm, I'll be back in the center of the world, New York. I have a whole itinerary planned. I, I am so ready. But that is another chapter closed. Can Jam, so Cal 2022, love it. I, I want to be back. I'm ready to be back. And now let me just thank the people who are partly responsible for my plane trips as well as my hotel rooms. Here are all of your beautiful names if you subscribe to the $20 tier on my Patreon. And of course, for my biggest money boys, allow me to speak out your beautiful names. McMad, Face Dennis, Laughing Psychonaut, HK57, TJ Daily, Saswata, Krina Gell, Rodrigo, Alicia Burrito, Alex, Lawrence, Fritz, Andrew, Kevin, Nice Luigi, Soda Pop. Unemployed, Pitt, Vanderwitt, Posse, Chronic, and Amber. I thank you all. And for the Californians who I've met during this fine event, well, it's very simple, isn't it? See you next year, and do not die. Fuck off.